Stitchy Tube. Settle down and watch Stitchy Tube. Hello, it's been a couple of weeks. I have been busy and alternately not been feeling super great, but I'm feeling good today and Grumpy's gonna step on my, my keyboard. And um, it's good to be back. Hello, hello. Um, I went to Seattle, and I'll talk more about that later, to visit my family. Everybody was there, and it had a really nice time. Um, Seattle is such a really cool place this time of year, and any time of year. Very cool. I'm going to start, as always, with the questions that I had. I, and there were a few of these questions that several people asked, so they must be important questions. Several people wanted to know, including Tammy Fulls, what is that sampler over your computer? Um, I have done, uh, you know, tours or whatever of my my craft room, the Hitchin Post, and a number of people asked about this sampler. I'm going to show it. Let's see how, how well we can. Ooh, let's see. Ooh, it's big, guys. Here, let's do this. Well, now you're just going to be seeing. Uh, that's about as good as it's probably going to get. So this is an antique, and it's by Maria Drews in 1836. Um, I really like this one. Oh, let's see if I can get close up. Oh, sorry, it's not super great, but it's got a really cool poem about night, and it's got some sheep that are stitched over four threads to the left and the right of that central scene with the house and the birds. I love her little cartouche around her name there at the bottom. It's really cool. So that's the Maria, Maria Drew sampler. I bought it from Madalena. Hmm a couple of years ago, and I have not reproduced it yet. Oh, hang on. Oh, well, I'm just going to wait. <laughs> I guess I can't film and, and hang pictures at the same time. Okay, back. So that's Maria Drews. Very pretty. Um, maybe I'll put a picture here, here, so that you can see it. Maybe a better picture. You can pause it if you want to take a look at it. So that's that sampler. Um, yes, I plan on reproducing it someday. I have several samplers, though, in the meantime that I have to get to. So not yet. Measy Meow Me said, do you carry your thread between letters and how do you prevent them from being seen? Yes, <laughs> I carry my thread between letters. I do. It's OK. I'm just a type B person. I don't I'm not like into like winning ribbons or entering shows and things like that. And so um, I talk about it, I think, in my, in my framing tutorial that you can put a piece of kind of neutral colored uh, mat board behind your piece when you stretch it and those carries just disappear. So that's how I prevent them from being seen. I don't carry like a crazy amount. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't carry it more probably than an inch, probably. Probably, yeah. An inch would probably be the most I would carry. I just don't, I probably need to learn to do the pin stitch, but um, whatever. The pin stitch, I guess Lori from, um, you know, Lori. I'll put a link below. Um, I can't think of her, the name of her channel. She did a really cool tutorial recently on the pin stitch. I haven't watched it yet, but I will be watching it this weekend. Part of the thing when I went on my trip is I just, um, fell really behind on a lot of the floss tube stuff. And so I've got a ton of catching up to do. And, you know, of course, when I came back from my vacation, I had a lot of orders waiting for me and emails to be answered and just things to take care of at the house here. So, okay, so yes, I carry my thread. Yes, I do. <laughs> Leanne Russell said, what is a fractor? And actually a couple people asked what a fractor was. And I, I say things and I just kind of assume people know what what I'm talking about, but that's those are good questions too. Fractors are a type of illuminated uh, document by the Pennsylvania Germans, Pennsylvania Germans, Pennsylvania Dutch, Pennsylvania Dutch, and um, they would. So you, you know what an illuminated script is like. Think of monks doing the Bible, where they've got like the giant letter I with figures around it and birds and swirlies and color and things. So that's that's illuminated. And so they would do birth certificates, uh, marriage certificates, christening certificates, things like that. And they would have a style of calligraphy known as fractor. And so that's where the um, art style gets its name is for, actually from the type of script that they would use. And then they would just decorate them to be really cool. And so you would hire somebody to do your marriage certificate. And um, very, it was very common to see things like hearts, birds, 
flowers and they have a very particular style to them. Now you can, so I'm gonna show you this book I have. This is a really good book if you're looking for um, a book about fractors. Fractor, Folk Art and Family. Um, this is a great book if you'd like to learn more. I'm not sure if it's still in print anymore, but I don't think, this one might've been on my Christmas list, but I don't think it was very, very expensive. You don't be afraid to buy used books. Um, you can look on um, eBay or Abe Books, abebooks.com to see if you can find a copy of this. But it's got a lot of great pictures of um, fractors. You can kind of see the style. And so it wasn't always, um, it wasn't always certificate. Sometimes it's just the fractor art on its own. So it might be like a man on a horse. And there are people that, you know, collect fractors just like some of us collect samplers where they find them at estate sales or they find them at um, antique shops or through dealers. And um, they really are quite pretty ones. I have, I, I kind of for a while was collecting fractor images on my Pinterest page. And so if you want to go to Pinterest, you can just search for the word fractor and you'll find some of the very prettiest ones that you can find online. They're kind of fun. I think they appeal to um, people that uh, do that are interested in samplers because it's a very similar style. It's kind of around the same time period as these antiques that we like to redo. And a number of designers, Paulette Stewart has done some fractor charts. Uh, Kathy Barrick has done some fractor charts. I have a few that I called fractors just because it's a similar style. And so it's, it's kind of a related craft and they're very fun to look at. Leslie Doyle wanted to know what count of fabric do you slip down to one thread over two? So in other words, Ruby, no. Okay. Um, so if you're stitching uh, needlework, if you've got like 32 count, you're stitching over two, so it's the same as 16 count, do you use one strand or two? I have used one strand as low as 32 count over two threads. Mm -mm. Really, you can't tell cats not to do something. You just have to remove <laughs> things entirely from their ability to mess them up. I forgot to mention that this is Stitchy Tube 24, lucky number 24. Welcome to all. Uh, let's see, so what was I talking about? What count do you slip down to one thread? I've slipped down to one thread over 32 count, uh, over two, so it would be the same as 16 count Ada, and it looks really nice, especially if you're using a thicker fiber. Anchor floss works great as one strand. In fact, um, you and I and friends, regular, I think, pretty much everything they did, they'd used one strand on 32 count. 28, it'll start to look a little thin, but if you're looking for something that's like a little kind of more watercolory, and kind of a lighter, you know, kind of a lighter look to it, you definitely could do one, one strand on 28 even. Um, any lower than that, it gets to be pretty sparse. And you do see sometimes um, old samplers where they had a really thin thread, but a kind of a thick fabric, and you really can definitely see those X's. And it does have a look to it, so you could, if you were looking for kind of an antique look, you can use one strand on a bigger fabric. Okay, what am I all into? I'm into a bunch of things, as always. Um, we got an espresso machine, Nespresso. We got a Nespresso machine. And when I went to Seattle, my brother and his family and my sister and her family both have one. Then my mom and dad were like, yeah, we love it when we come out here. So we got one too. And I don't drink coffee. Nespresso is amazing. <laughs> it's really, it's just one of those pod things. And you use the Nespresso pods. I don't know if you can use a curry pod in an espresso machine, but they've got a foamer that is so slick. It's got like a little, I should have brought it to show you, but they've got a little kind of spring in the bottom and you just pour milk up to a line, milk or cream or half and half or whatever. And you turn it on and it's perfectly quiet and it makes the most amazing foam for your coffee. And so um, that's really cool. Now we ordered a bunch of Nespresso directly from the company last week. And so we're hoping to get ours soon, but that was kind of a fun purchase and it'll save us from making pots of coffee. Sadly, the second thing I'm all into right now is the Whole30 diet program. It's not, I mean, not sadly, but related to the Nespresso, I can't have any dairy products. So the Whole30 program was something my sister mentioned to me and she let me borrow three of her books about it. It is 
a 30 day diet where you're basically looking for foods that might be problem foods for you and to just improve the way you're eating. So whole 30, you can only really eat things that you pick off of trees or bushes, dig out of the ground, or you can have meat. So fish out of the sea or whatever. So you, there's no, you can't have sugar, no artificial sweeteners, no honey, no sugar, no nothing. You can't have dairy. You can't have legumes, but you can have green beans and peas. What else can you have? Sugar, dairy, beans, no MSG. So it's basically, I'm doing a lot of chopping. So it's a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables, a lot of meats just that are not processed meats. And so if you do this for 30 days, then they lead you back into kind of how you regularly would eat to see if there are foods that cause you problems. And I'm hoping that helps with some of my inflammatory issues. I'm all about, I'm all into reading in bed. Uh, I think a lot of us, and I mean, I'm talking about me, but I think a lot of people, you know, we, we all are really connected to our electronics these days, our phones or our iPads or our laptops. And it's easy to, you know, kind of take that habit to bed and use that as your kind of settle down thing. And it's really not that great to be on electronics they say because of the lights in your eyes so I'm reading in bed again which is what I always used to do and I just started um, Moby Dick I had it I got a really good deal on it a brand new copy of it a couple of years ago and I've wanted to read it and to me like whaling and like boating and the high seas is fall to me for some reason and so I started Moby Dick it's really good Surprise, surprise. There's a reason it's a classic. I've never read it before, so I'm enjoying that. Uh, the next two th uh, things that I'm all into are related to my trip. My sister and I spent a lovely day at Pike's Marketplace, which is down by the coast. And it's really fun. If you've never been to Seattle or you're planning on going, really should check out Pike's Market. I think a lot of you en enjoy it. They have the original Starbucks down there and a lot of really cool restaurants, including one called Le Panier, which is, um, is a little kind of French style restaurant with great desserts. And then they have this marketplace that's three levels and it's things like, you know, flowers and vegetables and fruits. And this is the place where you may have seen people throw fish. Um, the fish throwing goes on upstairs and then they've got, you know, antiques and um, kind of global items and lots of handmade, you know, local crafts and things. And of course you can find t-shirts and stuff too. Um, I found, hold on, I was gonna show this in my stash flash, but I found this, which is a um, journal that this, so this lady takes old library books, old garage sale books, and she refinishes them as journals. And I thought this was really cute. I'm gonna put a link to her. She's actually online down here. She was very cute. I love supporting like little businesses and she was kind of tucked around a corner and she was, she looked so excited to be there, but she was, it was kind of a quiet little corner. And so it was, I got to chat with her for a minute. She's very, very sweet. And she does all kinds of different antique books and she does do the binding and things at home. And anyway, they, you also can get real touristy things like t-shirts and, you know, kind of Washington memorabilia there. But it's there's a reason it's busy, and a lot of the locals really do use it as a, as a market to get their food. I took a picture there, I'm going to put it here, of the flowers that you can get. You can get bundles of flowers like this big for 10 bucks that look like that. It's amazing. And um, they have signs up that they don't want you taking selfies with the flowers, but you could, you, they didn't want you touching the flowers unless you were gonna buy them. So um, I'm using this picture as my, as my background on my computer right now. It's very, very pretty. Um, the last thing I'm not, that I'm all into is salt and straw ice cream, and it's nothing I can get here, but it's a new chain, I guess, that started in Portland. And when my sister and I went to Pike's Marketplace, um, we afterwards she said we have to go to salt and straw and it's kind of like an ice cream store for grown-ups like i think if you took kids there and said okay we're gonna get some ice cream they'd be like yay and then they would look and go i don't like any of these kinds of ice cream because they're a little it's they're unusual and every month they have like a different rotating kind of list of special ice cream so when we were there it was vegetables. So every ice cream on the special menu had at least one kind of vegetable in it. The one that we tried that was so good was um, chocolate zucchini bread ice cream. Mm, it was really good. 
And um, I ended up getting a vanilla with toffee and ganache. And my sister got two little scoops. I guess I don't know what she ended up with, but it's very creamy, creamy ice cream. It's expensive. It's $5 a scoop. But, um, you know, sometimes ice cream can be real, like, grainy. It was just completely smooth and just round in your mouth. It was very, very good. That's what I'm all into this week. Winner of the last drawing was Melissa Demas. Demas? Demas. D-E-M-A-S. You won the drawing for last time, and it was a granny's button bag and a spool from my website. And so just contact me at my email address below, Melissa, with your address, and I'll get that out to you. Congratulations. She uh, asked everybody last time to remember their grandma in some way and talk about good memories of their grandma. Melissa said that her Grammy taught her the love of needlework, cooking, and the value of being. And that sounds like a pretty good grandma to me. So congratulations to you. The new drawing for next time is um, a quarter yard of a fabric of your choice from my website. Anything you want, one quarter yard. And um, in order to enter, don't say drawing or giveaway. Please be at least 18 or have your parents' permission. And I, if you're a subscriber or not, I'm not going to check. So whatever. Please subscribe, please. You don't have to. Quarter yard of fabric of your choice. And to, to enter, you have to say, like, what a favorite fall something is for you. I feel like finally we're heading into fall. It's been a hot summer for everybody which is kind of a bummer, but it's almost over, guys. And so what do you look forward to in fall? To me, fall is just my favorite my favorite season. I love the temperature. I love the way the air feels. I love the way the sky looks and the trees look. It's just kind of that idea of like, you know, kind of not bundling up, but just like not sweating <laughs> your armpits off or anything, you know, just you're, you're just enjoying the weather. Um, I love pumpkin spice lattes at Starbucks. I know that it's like such a cliche, but they're, it's good. So drink, a, drink one. Uh, I just love that just kind of cozy. Like it's a very needleworky time I feel fall is. Like I'm just all hot to just spend as much possible time as I can stitching in the fall. I don't, I, I think it's just kind of that like hunkering down for winter. I grew up and, and lived for a long time in North Dakota. And so fall really was kind of like, please, oh, please let this last as long as possible. So enjoyable. You know, the bugs would die and the weather was just perfect. And it was just a great time of year. Um, I guess I didn't say what my favorite thing with fall. I would say, you know, like one of the things I do is I, every fall will watch um, Pirates of the Caribbean part one. Because like I said, I feel like like the high seas for some reason is very fall like um and I also like to watch um Sleepy Hollow with Johnny Depp very fall um I don't know I just love the motifs I love pumpkins and harvest and there you go uh I guess I'm gonna I'll just talk just for a minute about my trip it's not super exciting to hear about somebody else's trip but one of the cool things that happened is my my sister has four four boys and one day that I was at their house I'm, I'm kind of one of those house guests that I would just as soon hang out at the house with people I don't need to like go see attractions or go places I'm there to see people when I go on a trip and so we spent a day just kind of you know being around the house and the boys started asking me questions about my needlework and about my website and about my YouTube channel and they were like a rapt audience like they had they asked me so many questions that I, I, when I went to bed my th my voice was hoarse but anyway after a long time of talking about it my sister said I should go upstairs and get my stitching stuff out because she has a couple of little boxes of stitching projects that you know, just during various stages of being done. Obviously with four boys, she doesn't have a lot of time for stitching. So she took it all out to see what she had. And um, she had some 10 count Tula in there. And so we got the boys all started stitching. And that led to this. And I'll, I'll flash some pictures up here while I talk about it. They are each two years apart. And all of the boys stitched all that night and I thought okay well when we get up in the morning they're not going to want to sure enough they picked it back up and they, they did some more the next time and they just did um various stitches Tate who is the third in line he asked me to show him how to make colonial knots which he did perfectly on the second try 
And then he started stitching over, he got a piece of linen and he started stitching over one on linen without anyone showing him how to do that, which is pretty amazing. And he was very focused on it. Um, Henry and Luke, I guess, after I left, downloaded, paid to download charts from Etsy. I think they got a Darth Vader and a zombie piece, which is fine. I, you stitch what you like. And so um, they even took it, let's I'll put it here, took it to the park and they were going to play pickleball, but when it wasn't their turn to sti to play, they they just worked on their stitching. I just think that's so cute. And I'm not saying that they'll that's going to be a lifelong hobby for them, but it's really fun to teach somebody and have them be generally enthusiastic about it. Okay, uh, finished pieces. Okay, I finished. I finished this one on my trip. I took it along. It's a Barbara Anna piece. And I have it on order. It should be here Thursday for my shop. I ordered a bunch of them. And it was really fun to do. It's just DMC. I stitched mine on 40 count. Um, I like her little birds, the way she does her wonky little birds. And so I'm going to put that in a frame um, to match another one that I did. I don't know where it is. It's somewhere. And then um, when I got home last night was, I think the first time I got any stitching. And since I came back a week ago, I started working again on this. I just picked up a bag. I didn't, didn't know what was in it. This is um, Autumn's Fruitful Labor by Brenda Gervais. And it's a good one for this time of year. And look at how pretty that is. Dang it. It's, I love the colors and it's really fun to work on. Her pieces are really fun because she's got lots of little elements. And so it's like, oh, I made a flower. And it's exciting. Um, but I've, I've shown you one of these already. So I'm going to slip into talking about my zine. Um, this is Margaret Sorensen from 1873. And this the chart for this is in my zine. And um, if you go to my website, kittenstitcher.com, I've got a pack of materials for this sampler so if you want to stitch the sampler it comes with eight over dyed threads one anchor thread and the 30 count weeks dye works linen linen it's linen but it's also called the color linen so it's linen 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 squared and it's just kind of a light creamy color and it really comes close to matching the original and so the supplies total are 33 dollars. shipping in the u.s is three bucks shipping overseas is 12 bucks flat no matter how much you order so that's the kit for this is on my website. You get the chart if you download the zine. The zine is available. I had a huge, I had a huge response to it. People were so excited. I got so many nice comments and people just are over the moon that there again is a resource for learning about samplers um, from yesterday and today. So samplers yesterday and today can be downloaded on my website. It's $12. You get that pattern. There's also a craft project on how to make these with washi tape. It's um, a feature I'm going to call Inspired by Garbage and it has this theme song. Inspired by garbage, inspired by garbage, inspired by garbage. And these are just coke bottles and it's kind of the ubiquitous shape that we all know and love. And so I designed two little button covers, a bee and a hive and you just cover, the instructions are all in there, but this is just washi tape like you get at the craft store. There's a list of supplies in there too. And so that's one of the other projects that you get. And then Paulette was my main interview this time. And she did a great job answering her questions and she designed us a piece using several motifs from an old sampler that she has. This is the piece in the frame. Merit should be forever placed in knowledge, judgment, wit, and taste. And I know this heart and these angels were on the old sampler that she's got. And then there was a variation on this little tree. So she designed that piece just to be, just to use DMC thread and whatever fabric you want. I just used, I don't even know what it was. It was a 40 count, just tea dyed fabric. She sent it to me as a lovely chart with a color, you know, kind of a picture of what it looked like in the software. And when she sent it, I was like, dang it, I'm going to stitch that so people know what the piece looks like. And so the frame was supposed to be in that Wednesday before or, or something. It was supposed to be in on time for me to get my zine released. And I didn't hear from the frame shop Wednesday, which was weird because they're usually really good. Thursday, I didn't hear from them. Friday, I was like, hey, is my frame, did my frame come in? And they said, oh, they sent the wrong one. They're resending it. 
So they, re they sent the wrong one twice. But that's the actual frame. It's very pretty. I haven't used that one before, but I like it, and it wasn't terribly expensive. Um, so anyway, I just went ahead and published the zine with pictures of the sampler kind of artfully laid on linen with some old red, uh, reddish cello lace that I have. But um, the chart is, is included in the zine too. So for the $12, you really get a lot. There are a number of articles. It's 34 pages long. And I think like people felt like it was a good deal. It was hard to know how to price it because um, I didn't want to overprice it. I didn't want to discourage people from getting it. But I also want, there's value in it because it, it's, I wrote 34 pages worth of stuff. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't downloaded it yet, you can go there. It's not going to, I'm not taking it off. The next issue will be out in about three months. And um, you'll just be able to get the issues that you want. I put pictures up of some of the articles and you can decide to download it or not. Okay, time for my stash flash. Um, I just got this one yesterday or the day before. This is one of those things that, okay, so like Priscilla and Chelsea had it and other people had it. And finally, I was at Jennifer's house one afternoon and I said, have you been to the Humble Bumble website yet and seen her cute dolls that she makes? I'll put a link below. Humble Bumble Stitcher. So she, oh, I Farm Girl got like a, a folder, you know, like organizer, stitching organizer. Well, she has these dolls. And she has like chicks and um, Santas. And I didn't notice these before, but she has witches witches look at how cute she is and she's got this tiny little jack-o-lantern bell the arms are wooden and painted and her legs are wooden and painted and the clothes are all handmade and it's just as cute as can be i love her love her love her she was not terribly expensive I would not make one of these for the amount of money that she charges for these. I think she must be a little crazy. Oh, I could just notice there's even a little hanger on the back so you can hang her from the wall. But she's gonna sit, she sits very nicely. So she's gonna sit out all year because you know, witches enjoy springtime also. They don't wanna be in a box in a closet. So that's one thing that I got. I'm super happy that I did because I, ju I just think it's great. Um, I showed you my notebook already. I got, on I'm always looking on eBay for um and Amazon for just old needlework books and I, I didn't have a copy of this it's edited by Betty Ring she was a fantastic sampler collector and scholar I mean she was just she's like the tip tip top of the tippy top and it's the book was this book was published first in 1975 and I think I got a first edition it's all in black and white which is fine it's totally fine um it, apparently this was a series of antiques but um the articles in here are curated articles like things that were written before it which go back to as early as 1922 and so it's kind of cool to have an old vintage book and the articles in it when they were printed those articles were already you know vintage antique articles or whatever i haven't read it yet but i think it's going to be very interesting and i just think it's really cool and that sampler on the cover is so awesome um okay and then i got two charts um one of these was my uh i got for the store and i just love it i've got i've got these in my shop why do i not take these out of the bag because you need to be able to see it blue skin by paulette stewart and this is a pretty new chart Blue skin was one of Washington, George Washington's horses. And I guess it says, let's see, what does it say? George Washington used two horses during the Revolutionary War. Oh, gotta put these on. Nelson and blue skin. Blue skin, this one, was the more skittish of the two, but both horses served him well and retired with him at Mount Vernon after the war. Thomas Jefferson once said of George, he was the best horseman of his age and the most graceful figure that could be seen on horseback. That's really cool. So, I. I have a copy of that now. I'd like to do that someday. I think it's very, very cool. And then somebody contacted me um, after, I think, I, t I don't know which video I talked about this in, but I was like, you know, I really, Birds of a Feather, the pattern that I really would like is fr called French Lessons. Well, somebody contacted me and, and she, we, she and I worked out a swap where I swapped her some stuff and then she sent me this 
and it's so so nice she sent me something else too but I'm gonna show you this and it was very very kind of her to do that I love it a friend of mine stitched these once upon a time over one and she did it like two 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 columns three rows and it was just so so cute so I thank her for that. Such a nice, nice thing. Um, Michelle Garrett, I think, is the one. I, well, I don't know who started it. But there's if, you, if you're if you on Instagram, you can do hashtag stitchy wish list. I'll put that below here. And um, you can just put up pictures of charts that you're looking for. And it's really cool because people are like working out trades or, you know, maybe selling or just gifting um, charts that people are like, hey, I've been looking for this for a while, so why not give it a try? I haven't really done one yet. I don't know if I will, but um, Stitchy wish, wish List and see if you can help people out. You can also just search for the Stitchy Wish List hashtag on Instagram to see if you can help anybody else out. Okay. I got that. I got that. Okay, so I got everything. That's my stash match. Oh, you know, here is my new light. I finally decided enough is enough and I retired retired the Otlite. I probably had had it for almost 20 years. Um, it wasn't terribly cheap when I got it. The bulb would never stay in so I had to rubber band around the base of the bulb and over the years I have replaced that bulb a number of times because it would just drop out. And I got one of these. It's a Viralux. I got it on Amazon. I think it was $59.99 with free prime shipping. It's really, really cool. It's very sturdy. And I like that the bulb is enclosed. And you can adjust it. The brightness, one, two, three, four. I think four brightnesses. Last night I, I used it for the first time. And I was like, this light is really good. And then I realized I was working with it on the lowest setting. So it'll get really nice and bright if you need it. Um, it also, you can change it warm or cool. You can warm warm the light up so it's more yellow or cool it down so it's more blue. And I just, I really, really like it. it it's a good lamp and I think it's going to serve me very well for a long time. Um, okay, that's my stash that's my stash, stash. Okay, I got two more things I want to talk about today. I thought I would do um, a list of 10. I haven't done one for a while and I wanted to do a tag you know, where you, you ask questions of yourself and then you basically, you're passing it forward like, hey, maybe you want to answer these questions too. So I did a quick tag of 10. A lot of times I think they're 20 questions. Um, and so this is just a quick tag of 10 different stitching related questions. Number one was what stitch do you see on a chart and you go, ah, crap. So is there some kind of a specialty stitch or, you know, like do you hate three quarter stitches? Um, I really hate blending <laughs> and I was I don't know who I was talking to this about this but um, I met Teresa Teresa Wensler once at a show and she was the nicest person and her pieces are absolutely beautiful but good lord the blended threads where you take you know it's like one strand of this and one strand of that and then stitch two stitches and you're done <laughs> like but do that times a million so it just was like a lot of blended threads I don't it's just so putsy it's very, very pretty, but if I see blended threads, I'm... Uh, um, French knots, I just refuse to do because I can't make a French knot to save my life. I just do colonial knots. But if I see blended threads, it's like, oh, Lord. Number two, what type of thread besides DMC do you think you have the closest to a complete collection of? Um, for me, I would say it's Weeks Dye Works and... I, I think I have a complete collection. I, I know I do. I have a com complete collection. Designers typically, you know, if you ask a thread company, they will um, send you samples of everything or whatever you want. And then as you use threads up, you just ask them to send you more. But last year, 2017 at market, I offered um, the folks at Weeks Dye Works to do a DMC conversion. I had done one a long, long time ago when I first started. And they used to refer people to it all the time. And so I, uh, I did it again from, you know, from scratch and I did the whole line. Because, you know, over 20 years, colors may have subtly changed. The Weeks Dye Works I find to be pretty consistent. But anyway, I had most of the threads, but there were a number of them that I didn't have. And so I just emailed them and they sent me the rest. So that was really cool. But if you go to WeeksDyeWorks.com, I'll put a link there. 
you can find the thread conversion there um, from DMC into weeks. Number three, have you ever given up on a piece because of the fabric or threads? I gave up on a piece once, when was it? It was probably 15 or 20 years ago. I was going on a trip and I, I wanna say, I was, I was somewhere where it was like, I didn't have, I didn't have a needlework project with me. So I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll just find a ch you know, chart and a piece of Ada. And this would have been a long time ago, 25 years ago, easily. And I think I picked out, it was maybe like a Paula Vaughn or something. And um, I, I bought Ada to go with it. I bought what was available wherever I was in the DMC. And I started stitching on it and the Ada was really crappy. And it was just like scratchy and thin and starchy. And I just, I stitched for a while on it. And I think I probably just threw it away or, you know, cut out that piece. And I don't, I have no idea. I probably just threw it away. It was terrible. I gave up on that piece. I never did finish it. And I don't know what happened to the chart. Number four, what's the worst damage you've ever done to your needlework? <laughs> I know that we all have stories on like how we've messed up our needlework. Mine actually, I made a video when I talked about it. Um, the, earlier this year when I was having trouble with plantar fasciitis, I put ice on my foot in a gallon Ziploc bag to, to help cal calm it down. And then I set it down on the wood floor, the bag next to my stitching bag. And um, the stupid bag leaked. It like it melted. I forgot I set it down. And then the leak, the water, Seeked, soaked into my stitching bag and it blotched up like three different pieces that I had in there, which was kind of a bummer. That's probably the worst damage I've done because it's took out. I mean, it didn't take them out. I'm going to work around it and, and I've been able to, to lighten up some of it. So it's okay. But geez, Louise. Number five, what is the weirdest piece you've ever stitched? I had my mom send me pictures. Let's see if they ever came in. It's probably not nice to say these are the weirdest. Oh, it says they're still downloading. I'm gonna put a picture here. I um, stitched my mom an Emmett Kelly clown of him, the old sweeping up the spotlight thing back when I was a teenager. And she got really into collecting clowns. We had a family friend, um, fam well, family member, uh, cousins, that they, um, her mom got really into collecting clown statues. And so my mom, you know how you kind of get somebody else is doing something, you're like, oh, I want to do that too. So she got really into cl collecting clowns for a while. And um, so I stitched her that piece when when she was into collecting clowns. It's That's probably the weirdest piece I've ever stitched. I enjoyed it. And she still has it hanging. It's, you know, on Oatmeal Ada or something like that. Okay, <clears throat> what is, oh, have you ever misplaced a piece? Like just flat out lost it. I did, uh, I took a class on how to cross stitch in seventh grade, I think, from Mrs. Benson, who was the music teacher, and she liked to cross stitch at that time. And sh she had little patterns and then th threads and things for us. And she made, you could make like a little kit. And all I remember was mine was a little, I think it was like a little angel maybe. And um, I was partway done with it. And then at one at one point, I just couldn't find it anymore. It just was gone. So I don't know if I accidentally threw it away or took it somewhere and forgot to bring it back. I don't know. But I mean, it's kind of sad because that was really, I think my first cross stitch piece. I had, And the weird thing is, is like I started with needlepoint and embroidery. So like I had done and uh, I had done different kinds of embroidery stitches before I ever did a cross stitch, but I, that one is just gone to the ages. It's in a dump somewhere probably. Number seven, what do you do with your patterns when you're finished with them? I used to, I used to attach my patterns to the back of the piece. I would make like a little pocket and put the pattern back there, which is really cool. And I may go back to doing that. Um, a lot of times I'll just either sell them or give them to people or um, I don't ever just throw them away because I feel like they have value. But um, 
I mean, I guess I have thrown a few away. So I'm pretty hard on my patterns. I don't make working copies. I don't highlight, but I just, you know, you can kind of tell. I don't know. It's not too bad. It's just bent up. I just, they just get used. So um, sometimes I keep them. These days I'm kind of keeping them. I would say that's what I'm doing now is they just go back in my stash. And I guess that way if somebody would want to borrow it, I've got it. Sometimes I've had people, you know, borrow stuff that I haven't gotten back. I think I loaned my... Um, spring, summer, autumn, winter prairie schooler sampler charts. I think I loaned those to somebody, maybe a shop customer or something back in Fargo. I have no recollection of who it was. I kind of just vaguely remember it and I never got them back. Um, but that's okay. Okay, number eight. What does that say? Oh, what's your worst stitching injury? I thought it said, what's your worst stitching in Jerry? I didn't know what who Jerry was. My worst stitching injury, I think, was the time that I found a needle in the carpet with my toe. Like I was briskly walking. And so as my foot came forward, I just like hit the needle just head on with my big toe and it just went and speared my toe. There really wasn't much blood, um, but I hate it when you, I don't know if you guys do it, but I always have my fingers very close to where I'm stitching. And so a lot of times I'll, I'll jab the needle under my thumb and you know how you get that little white line where the needle goes under your thumbnail and then there's a little blood I do that all the time uh, number nine what to you would be a perfect stitching get-together um, I know retreats are popular and and people have craft groups and things and I think those are fun but for me really the best kind of stitching get-together is a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing because I feel like I'm, I'm actually kind of a shy person and um, I, I like being able to talk with somebody one on one because I feel like you get more in depth. You know what I mean? Like you can get to like, what are your problems? What are your, you know, what are your worries? What are, what are your true feelings on things? I think that the way you behave with one person can really be different than the way you behave with a lot of people. And I, so I like going to retreats and I like going to stitching groups, but for me, a perfect stitching get together is me with a good friend. I get to go to Jen's, you know, sometimes it's all every week, every Sunday at two for a couple of hours. And we just have a great time and we just, there's no plans. Um, we might have snacks or we might not. Um, we look at the chickens. We play with Sally a little bit and her dog. And to me, that's like perfection, you know, like sitting with my friend, Sue, or, um, you know, just, just with one person. Because we have get-togethers with her sisters, too, and then um, a friend. And, you know, sometimes that's five or six people. And I enjoy those, too. I just really like the one-on-one. -on -one. That's, to me, a perfect stitching get-together. Okay, number 10. What do you think will happen to your pieces when you're gone? <laughs> it's kind of scary to think about. I don't know. I don't know. I would imagine as I get older that I at some point will have to like inform my children like these are the things that are worth money. Really, does it matter? I don't know that it matters. Like it doesn't matter to me because I'll be gone. Um, I would imagine that they there will be a few that they will hang on to, you know, as having good memories for them. I don't, I don't really know. Maybe they'll sell them or maybe they'll donate them to a thrift store. Um, I kind of like that people are doing the save the stitches now where they go to the thrift store and they find something, you know, that's cross stitched. And even if it's a little dated or weird, they're like, I'm going to save it and love it. And I think that's cool. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know, but I probably need to at some point think about like what, what, I mean, like, you can't really give somebody errands for after you're dead. Right. But I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm, I don't know. Maybe I'll just have them, like, I'll be like Queen Victoria and I'll just have them put them all in with me. And I'll just take them into the, the beyond. All right, that's my quick tag of 10. I'll put the list of questions below in case you want to answer them too. And then I've got my last little thing here, which is um, my three things from my shop. Every time I um, have a video, I talk about three things that I'm excited about with my shop. To show you, if you want to tune out, you can. Goodbye, goodbye. But if you want to stay, I'm going to show you three things that I think are kind of fun. Um, I am just FYI, I have um, a huge order of carriage house sampling charts coming in and some of these charts go back a long time. And so I'm, I'm gonna have a very, very extensive 
um, selection of, of carriage house sampling charts. I think they'll, they'll be here tomorrow and it'll take me probably a day to get them all up because it's an insane number. I can't even imagine how big that box is going to be. Okay, so one of the cool things that I have is um, from just another button company, the Pin, Pin Lovers Club. And so this is kind of a cool thing. They have these pin sets and it's a limited edition pin set. So they only make them for this one month and then you can't get them anymore. I think I signed up for 20 of them. I'm not doing an auto. You can just kind of pick and choose the ones you want. And then with each one, there is a pin cushion, a set of instructions that you go to here to uh, download the free instructions on the pin cushion that goes with those pins. I think that's really cool. So I, I can't remember how much this, this is. I think it's like around $13, something like that for all of it. And so that's one thing that I've got that's new and exciting. And I'm on the auto for that. So I'll be getting them every month. Um, another thing that I have that I have back in is um, this set of cards. And I know people have shown these a few times, I think, by Birds of a Feather. If you like Birds of a Feather, I can get um, through Hoffman Distributing these sets of eight cards with envelopes and all of them have a um, black part of a birds of a feathers design on it. And so they're, they're stitchy, stitchy cards. And they're cool. I, I have some and I use them sometimes. And then on the back of each one, it shows you the whole piece that it's off of. You don't get a chart with these. These are just a blank, just a blank card. But they're kind of nice for like, if you have friends that stitch, it's just there aren't a lot of things like this. And so it's $9.90 for eight eight cards and envelopes, which kind of, when you think about it, how expensive are cards these days? Good Lord. I saw a cool Father's Day card for Steve that I was going to get. It had a hand solo on it. It was really awesome, but it was like $6. And I'm like, I'm not going to pay $6 for a card. I'm finally in that part of my life, I guess, where I complain about the price of things. So I'm going to complain about the price of reading cards because back in the day, they cost a nickel. And my mom and I used to go to um, like we called it crazy days, but it'd be like sidewalk sales. And we used to go to this one up at the Northport shopping center and they had a little Hallmark Hallmark store there. And they used to do grab bags for a dollar and it would be like a bag full of stuff for a dollar. And we, we would get a bunch of them and then we would take them to the car and open them all up to see what was in there to see if it was worth buying more. And we bought so many dang <laughs> bags and they had like you know, like charms and it was a lot of greeting cards though. And so we would just load up on cards. And of course the cards that are left are like the, sorry to hear about your appendectomy card or, you know, it was just like really specific weird cards, but they were a dollar for like a whole bunch of them. And so she still has like a huge drawer full of cards because she loves getting cards at sidewalk sales. Okay, and then the third thing Okay, the third thing that I'm going to talk about is uh, my fabric selection. I'm still dyeing fabric. I'm still having a great time. I love naming them. I have a couple of new colors this time. I've got Juliet, Bumble, and Pallor. And this is Pallor on the 46 count. I love the way the 46 count dies up. It is a dream. It is amazing. It is so, so pretty. Um, I don't know. Can I see the stitch on 46 count? It's really small. I'm selling a ton of it. So some of y'all are able to do this. I could do it. I could do something small. I don't know that I'd really want to do a huge piece. I'd have to get better cheaters. So that's Pallor. I've got 46 count cookie crumb and I've got cookie crumb in a bunch of counts again. And then this is uh, Juliet. And it's kind of a um, like pale neutral lavender, which is really a cool color. I have it in Ada too, but I didn't get it in any other counts this time. Um, I really, really like it. It just reminded me of Juliet from Romeo and Juliet. That was the first thing I thought of is it's just kind of like this pale antiqued, pale, pale, you know, beigey, brownie lavender color. It's very pretty. But I've got a lot of fabrics in now from Weak Style Works and r, &R Reproductions, and I've got more in the w on the way. This fabrics, I'm selling a lot of fabric, so I'm gonna really just expand that section. The cool thing about my Wix website is it keeps track of my inventory for me. So if it's on my website and you buy it, that means I have it to send you. It's not something that's gonna go on order for a month or two. It's actually in my hot little hands. And so what I'm doing with my distributors is I just like order a whole bunch 
of fabrics, hand dyed fabrics, and I get them in, you know, it's like I might get half of them or I might get three quarters of them. Um, Weeks Dye Works puts them on back order for me and then I just post them when they're in. And when they're not in stock, they're just, you can't buy them. It's, it says out of stock. Um, I've got a bunch of picture this plus I'm gonna have two for, um, I ordered in a bunch for Galleria because fabric really sells well at those things. That I think is all for today. Thank you all for your um, kind comments, questions, and viewership. I'm glad to be back making videos. I'll just let y'all know I'm feeling pretty good these days. I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow and the meds that I'm on are really helping with whatever condition this is that I'm dealing with. So until next time, I'm gonna say ta-ta, but I have the first, I have a chicken update. Chicken update! Chicken update, a chicken update. Here's the rooster. He's getting very big. The lady. Oh my goodness. That's a lot of growing, Mr. Rooster. But the girls are all still getting big. And they like to be outside in the grass eating bugs. And they're looking great. Mr. Rooster. Mr. Rooster. Mr. Mr. Rooster. <laughs>